Welcome to part two of the cutting machine craft videos where I'm showing you how you can take shrink film and make this really adorable jewelry for Halloween. And we used our cutting machine to cut all of these parts out and then we shrunk them in our toaster oven and you can see that whole video in the link below. So once you have all your pieces and parts ready, I'm going to show you how to assemble these moth earrings. Then we'll assemble the Mr. Bones earrings. And finally, I will do a matching necklace to go with these very simple spider and spider web earrings. So the tools that I'm going to need to make these earrings are really quite simple. I actually have, these are jewelry tools, and I have two sets of pliers, and sometimes these come in kits. So, you know, I would probably prefer two of these, but I don't, ha I only have one. So I'm using these with just the hook nose. So what you need are these little tiny needle nose pliers. Sometimes they have round ends rather than a flat. I like the flat because I can get a bit better grip. All I'm using this for is to open and close the o-rings because the way that we're assembling this is so simple that really almost anyone can do it. So let's start with these moth earrings. I have here my two gold backs of the moths. Then I have the heads that are also in gold. And then I have two sets of wings. I have here, these are four millimeter o-rings and these are you know, just a brushed gold. I thought that was really pretty. And all you'll want to do is grab onto this, and this is where I need to put my glasses on, because it's tiny. Grab onto this, and you can see where the split is. Use your other set of pliers and just gently pull them apart, just to get enough gap. You'll slide the body of the moth first, and then the wings. You'll also want to slide on the head, and we'll close that up. And you want to close that as tight as possible so that there's no gap. Okay, then we'll take another O-ring, do the same thing. We'll pick that up and just give it a bit of an opening and we'll slide that onto the head. For these earrings, I'm actually going to use this really big hoop. This one, I, I use these kind of U-shape hoops and this one I'm going to use round ones. So I need this to be shut before I slide it on. So I'll go ahead and close that as tightly as possible and then open this up and just slide that right onto the earring. So that was pretty simple, right? I'm gonna go ahead and make the other one. And just for a few dollars, I have a really cute set of earrings that I can wear on Halloween. So those are done. Let's go ahead and do the Mr. Bones. And this is very similar. I'm going to use the same four millimeter O-rings and then I have these very simple earring tops. So I think the tricky part about making the Mr. Bones is laying him out so that you know exactly where the parts and pieces are. So I do know this is his chest and then his hips are downward. The head's easy enough. That goes right on top. And then the legs and the arms. So we have arms here. And sometimes when things shrink, they don't always shrink the same size. So I'm going to line these up. It looks like these two arms are smaller. I'm putting the thumbs towards him. And these are a little bit larger. I do have an arm bone in there someplace. So I know the arm bones are the longer bones. Let's see if I can find them. They're not all the same length. So it's kind of like us. We're not all the same length either. So there's four arm bones. Some of them are different, that's okay. And the shoulders go this direction and then down to his arms. I'm gonna switch those because these are the larger hands. So we'll put the larger arms with the larger hands. We have feet down here. So big toe goes in the center. Then we have four different bones. The ones with the split are actually going towards his ankle. Let me move this down. So the ankle, and you can see how I'm laying it out so that the feet will fit right between and then the ones without the split will go up towards the hips. And the same thing, I'm going to position it so that the hips, you can see that one's larger on the side and then it gets smaller, so easy enough. So I think getting everything in position before you start adding the O-rings is a really good idea. All right, there we go. We have two Mr. Bones. Then you're going to need quite a few of these O-rings, as you can see. And I'll start with the foot and move up each leg and then I'll just add those to the body. I think that makes the most sense. I have 
have my bones assembled. One thing that I notice when I add the top earring part, the part that goes through your ear, it always works better if you put an O-ring first. So technically you could put the earring right through the top of the bone's head, but adding this O-ring really does make a difference. And then slide the earring on. And it doesn't really matter which way because they look the same on both sides. And then here is your finished earring. The last project are these spider web and spider earrings and then I'm going to make a necklace to match. So I bought this silver chain here and I want the necklace and the earrings to match. So I'm actually taking this one apart and redoing it so you can see me do that. The only extra thing that I'm going to need for tools is this wire cutter because I will need to cut my chain. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it the same length as what we had before. And it's important that you make sure both earrings have the same length of chain. You can either count out the links or you can just measure it. Do that there. So I'll lay that out on my fabric and make for sure that we are the same length. So along with the chain, I also have some silver four millimeter O-rings and then I'm using the same tools. So this is pretty simple. I'll grab an O-ring and open that up using both of these pliers, slide the spider on, and then the end of one of my chains. We'll close that up, then we'll get another O-ring here. I'm gonna slide on the spider web, the top of the spider chain, and then the earring. And that's it. That is such a quick earring. Make sure that's nice and tight, nice and closed, doesn't have any gap in it. And there's the first one. So I'll make one more. And there's your set of earrings. So I'm going to make a necklace to match and I have three of these pieces cut out that have an end on both sides. And this will be pretty simple. So I will, sim I will just add an O-ring between each to link those three together. This shrink film is a bit thicker so I needed to open it up just a bit more. Okay, there we go. Then I want two per ring and then we'll close it up. And this is why we need the four millimeter rings so that they're big enough to hold the thickness of two pieces of shrink film once it's shrunk. So there's two, I'll add one more and there's no back and front to these. So that makes it really easy. Okay, at this point, I'll need to decide how long I want my chain or where I want this to sit on my neck. So if I were to wear this dress, I would want it to sit about right here and I'll want my chain to come here. However, I am going to put a closure on the chain, but we'll do that later. So I'll, all I want to do is place that around my neck and I figured about here, we can always make it shorter. So I'll go ahead and cut that chain and again, don't worry about the closure yet. We will add that in and we'll take a few links out so that we make up for adding that addition. If it's a longer necklace, you may not need to put a closure on your necklace. You can just slide it over your head, but this one's pretty short. So open that up. I'll add one end of my chain here and I'm, I'm going to do the same on the other end. Okay, so here it is. And what I'll do at this point is hold it up so that I can see about the center. And then I'll clip that open. And I'm going to see if I want it a bit shorter. So it looks to me like I do need some shortening. So I'm going to trim, I would say about an inch off of each side. I do have this lobster claw uh, closure and I'll put that on one side and then an O-ring on the other side. So I think I will make sure that they're both even and go ahead and just clip those off. I'll take one of my O-rings and put it on to one side just by itself. This will be what the lobster claw will grab and make sure that's nice and tight. Then one more O-ring to attach the lobster claw with the chain. This is so simple. I love making my own jewelry. I feel like I can have customized jewelry all year round. That's exactly my style. So, and even for Halloween, right? So there we have it. Here are the earrings to match. This will make a great costume 
I don't know about you guys, but that was so much fun to make and there's just something about shrink film that takes me back to my childhood and I think that's always a good thing for us to tap back in every once in a while. So go get your shrink film, get your little toaster oven. This is a fun thing to do with your kids or with your teens and make yourself some Halloween jewelry. Make sure that when you make your jewelry from our designs that you use hashtag madewithleah on your socials so that we can follow along with your creative journey as well.